I'm going to demonstrate one method of insulating uh, my battery cables on the Esprus. Uh, these are what came with it originally, I mean to me, and uh, I'm assuming that they somewhat resemble maybe what was here uh, when they put the uh, new engines in. So anyway, we're going to start with uh, these have all been, the connections were all uh, finished with a finish rasp, a finish file. On all sides you can see the see the copper showing and then without touching them they were absolutely torqued tight with this uh, 3 8 stainless equipment and then after that they were brushed with a little bit of oil uh, to take up the space and make the uh, surface tension better for a, a long life connection. So the first thing we're going to do is take varnished cambric. Now this is, there's a lot of ways to splice and coverings and, and such, but this is what I have and own. And this is what I've been dealing with for the last uh, 45, 50 years in industrial load centers and motor control centers is the uh, method with where you use varnished cambric to cover the copper. This is so the rubber will not stick to it. You can you can put it on continuously or you could put it on in smaller pieces to uh, <coughs> Create the barrier. You could put it on heavy, or you can put it on lightly where it just covers uh, the equipment you're trying to keep the rubber from sticking to when you go to make it up. We're going to put raw rubber on this connection and. Uh, To seal it up. Okay, there's the top of that. You may want to deal with this later, and if you've got rubber stuck to it, you are in for a real nasty tear down to get to the splice. That rubber just sticks to this copper. So, just keep in mind that the varnish cambric tape is to keep the raw rubber from sticking to your joint. So, when you have to change out a burned out motor or, or a splice in some kind of control center or what, that you don't have rubber stuck to your connection. You only need one covering of this rubber, I mean of this uh, cambric. To keep the rubber from sticking. I should have a knife to make this a little bit neater. But I do not. Okay, I do believe that's enough cambric. This 
to next. Next is the rubber, the raw rubber tape making these. Types of connections. Remember, this is an industrial, it's an old school method, but it's still quite readily, <laughs> readily used, still quite readily used in industrial applications. And uh, in some cases, I, I believe that people may be using a different method that's approved, which is also very good. Okay. Wow. Okay, there it is. All right, rubber wrapping time. Okay, we're going to start just just on the back side with one little bit of this rubber on the plastic tape where we're uh, beginning. You don't want to leave too much rubber. You're either this tape is expensive, but this is now you're putting a buffer on the joint that if it does go up against something sharp with the uh, later, you know, that hits the outer plastic. The last, the last wrapping is going to be a regular plastic tape. And this rubber acts as a buffer to keep something from hitting that tape and pushing it absolutely up against the uh, harder cambric or the copper and creating a short. So that's what the rubber rubber is all about. And I'm going to use two two layers of rubber on this joint. Okay, we're going to go back one more time with another coat of rubber. Let me move the camera. I feel like it should be maybe a little over here. Maybe it should be looking at higher in the air or whatever. I'm not supposed to be looking at me necessarily as we are to get we're going to put two layers of rubber on this very high it's a low voltage but boy howdy you talk about high current that's these 28d batteries in, in parallel so you can more than weld with that kind of power This can take a, it will be, it will be situated so it's sitting in a way that it's not resting against anything to worry about. But nevertheless, it has to be tough to maintain position in a, per se, accident. This is a, negative ground machine oh, no positive ground excuse me positive ground machine so these I'm not this is the uh, negative is the hot wire here and that's what this is that we're going for all right all right here we are that, that in my estimation is plenty now you've got your cambric, you've got your raw rubber that just flatly sticks together and cures. And the last, not least, I could stand a little piece of raw rubber stretched up that, uh, you want to call it, crutch of the connection.
right, let's take our regular tape and uh, we want, oh, about three layers of this, the whole distance of the, of the reattached job. You might have different requirements uh, for when you're working on a, a place where they are making connections to motors and, and uh, control centers and such. You need to be very aware of the fine print notes and the, on the uh, plan. There may be a special re absolute requirement for how splices are made. So that would definitely limit your methods because you definitely have to follow the instructions that are in the plan. Okay, I'm taking the plastic out over the plastic, the original plastic out. Okay, then we're coming back this way for the second, second pass. Try to keep this tape straight. Okay, we're going to head back the other way and then we're finished with the tape wrapping. I don't want to sell this to somebody and, and then hear back, oh, well, they had trouble with batteries something happened or they got tipped over and the battery shorted because of bad cabling on it well it's not really my responsibility to put these kind of things over but I sort of do make it my responsibility not to sell somebody something that's going to hurt them okay that reconnect is reconnected. See, that goes, it just hangs down at the bottom of the bottom of the battery box. I'll make sure that it's not up against anything there. These go to the negatives, which are are definitely hot. I uh, let me cover this. I put this green tape on these things years ago. Uh, sort of thinking about, well, I'm an electrician and green is ground, but. Uh, and on a vehicle, green does not mean necessarily ground. These are the black cables. They go to the negative. I'll just put a little, a little bit of make this tape look a little better. In here forever. Put a layer on. But, uh, black is definitely hot on this one. The negative is definitely hot in relation to the ground. All right, and that's it. That is what you use varnished cambric for. I'm thinking there must be, there's gotta be, <laughs> has to be a lot of ways of doing this splice. But this is uh, an industrial mainstay that I've had, you know, I've worked with for over 40 years actually. Maybe a bit longer than that. They just have different ways. That varnish cambric's getting very expensive. So I may I choose some kind of a I could choose some kind of a uh, heat shrink or something. A rated kit, UL approved for the for the type of splicing you're doing. Now this is a automotive application big application but it, this is still what you do with 480 volts 
uh, in a factory for the last 50 years or even I mean, longer than that. That's as long as I've been doing it. And, uh, all you do is get that back. That'll take care of it. That's a tough connection. You could smack it, hit it, do all kinds of things to it. It's not going to uh, affect it terrible. That's it. We've got uh, that connection made on the new battery installation. That's what we're doing. We're fixing the box, putting in the new batteries, and getting it ready for somebody to take it back east or wherever. I'm going to put 7,000 miles on it. And uh, it was fun. No doubt about that. Right here is the negative cable that attaches to both of those batteries. And it is considered to be hot because it doesn't attach to the ground. It just goes the other way. Don't ever let this stuff bother you. Well, when you come to the voltage regulator, you need to think about that for a while, but uh, don't let it bother you. So this is a very important cable to absolutely know where it's uh it's going and how it's getting up here and attached right here and right here so that is a very important cable you know that we've worked on it and we worked hard at making sure it was nice and clear and in all of its supports and grommets and everything is perfect carrying it up to this critical place where if you get hit by a train well, good luck with that but uh, it's about the only thing I can think of that <laughs> really caused these batteries to shorten oh get hot burn I don't know what all they might do in a dead short but I'm sure they would sizzle up pretty good maybe get hot i don't know i'm not a battery specialist i'm just surmising about what could happen with this battery cable as a new owner is desperately trying to get his new project home a very badly put together battery system is uh dangerous